So I just want to say welcome to everyone who's joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much for giving up your time to come and join in with our special Pilot Connects session that's all about teaching Cronton Knights basically and how to kind of get the maximum out of the production. And my name's Esther Richardson. I'm the artistic director of Pilot Theatre. I'm also one of the co-directors of the show and one of the instigators of the whole project. So it's it's thrilling to be with you and it's also thrilling to be here with Carolyn Bradley who has done the most fantastic job on our education resources for the show and has really kind of done a huge amount of work on thinking around the creative education aspects and, and how we can sort of share those with you. So, um, so it's, it's great to be here and um, how we usually do these sessions is we, we like them to be as interactive as they can be. Um, we, um, we've arranged it um, in a way um, partly kind of for safeguarding and, and various reasons. So we, 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 um, we invite you to use the Q&A chat box to communicate with us, but we will keep your cameras and your microphones turned off. So that is the way that we will um, connect with you through the session. I'd like to encourage you not to be shy you know we've got an hour together if you've got a burning question about the production about how to teach it um you know you must have come here with a purpose um so you know please do just dive in and, and ask us whatever you would like to know about the show or about delivering the kind of education work around it um but to kick us off carolyn i'm just going to ask you first mm. of all um, how did you come to hear about pilot theater and work with us what's the story well, um, if we go right back, I, this is uh, going really far back, but I remember when I was doing my A-levels, actually, one of the plays I saw for my A-levels was Lord of the Flies by Pilot oh, about <laughs> 18 years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. Um, so I've always known about Pilot. And then um, now, since I've been a teacher, I've lived up in Harrogate, Leeds area, so obviously a lot more local. And so last year we saw Noughts and Crosses. So I'm a, I'm a drama teacher, I should say as well. I think um, most people know that. But So I work in a school in Harrogate and we took our school to see Noughts and Crosses by pilot last spring. And that was our set, it's our set text for GCSE with A2A, great choice of play. Um, so we also then took part in the Noughts and Crosses Film Festival. So pilot just have this amazing set of opportunities for schools and for young people as well and there's you sort of run a project alongside each production don't you with lots of opportunities for people to get involved in so we did the we entered the short film competition with pilot and so our school our year 10 students made their own short film which was sort of in response to some of the themes that come up in knots and crosses and we just had the best time it was i think it was the most enjoyable project i've worked on making a film I've never made a film before and the kids absolutely loved it we made this really dark dystopian film about being <laughs> locked actually it's quite um um prophetic because it was about uh, some kids locked in a school um and they couldn't get out and there was like um a contagion going on on the outside world so maybe it was um looking into the future but yeah that was really enjoyable and then we shared our film at York Theatre Royal with Pilot and we got some feedback and we were helped with the digital side of things by pilots, digital officers. And so it was, yeah, really, really enjoyable. And then since then we've just kept in touch. And then this opportunity came up to work on Crompton. So, yeah. Oh, brilliant, um, thank you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that actually. I didn't know that you were um, yet another person who has seen <laughs> Lord of the Flies. This is kind of like, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those, those things about pilot that you always, one always runs into people who saw that production because it took yeah. for about 10 or 12 years yeah. and was a you know was the production that people will have written their own um a level or gcse examination paper on which is which is a fascinating part of our history yeah we still are so, so that's lovely okay um thank you for that that's really nice um let's um let's dive in now with um some uh questions about um crompton night so okay. first of all how would you suggest approaching the production to teach it for the live theatre section of the drama written exam, Carolyn? What, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so um, there's a live theatre section on nearly every exam specification. So whether you do AQA or OCR or um, Educast, for GCSE certainly, for A-level it slightly varies more. 
but we all need to fill that gap and I think Cronford is an amazing production to do that with. Um, I would always approach any theatre production holistically. I think it's always a good idea to say to the students, just go in with your eyes completely open, look at all the aspects of it. I think it can be quite limiting to um, already try and pigeonhole a production to say, just, just look at the lighting or just look at the set. So always approach it really holistically. Um, I always encourage students, I'm sure all the drama teachers do the same, not to make any notes while you are watching because you want that emotional experience. You want to be able to fully immerse yourself in the production. So um, we are probably talking to a group of people who have seen Cronkton and I would imagine people have seen it live with their schools. I would really hope people have had that experience. But if not, if you've watched it online with your students, um, I would encourage them to have not made any notes first time. And then the first thing I would always do is ask my students to write me a theatre review. So as soon as I can afterwards, get them to write me a review. And that review has to contain your opinion. I want your personal response. I want your emotional response to that production. I want references to the acting, your favourite bit, um, what you loved about the lighting, the set, the sound, the costume. So I try to get a response straight away that's got that all in there. Um, and then from there, we would then go to breaking down elements with lots and lots of discussion. One of my favourite parts of being a drama teacher is that lesson after we've seen a production where I get to say, what was your favourite bit? And we all talk about our favourite bit of the production because I think getting that personal response and appreciation and excitement after seeing a production it is really, really fantastic. So if you're now doing that digitally, if you're watching it online, have those conversations if you can set up some kind of chat. Uh, with your students to really get to grips with what their favourite bits were, the bits that really affected them, the impact it had on them, because that always comes up in exam questions. Um, and from there, it would be then a process of, okay, well, let's, if we can watch it again, you've got until the 9th of May with your students to watch it again uh, through the webcast. If you can try and watch it at first a, a second time and then start to break down okay let's focus on the lighting let's focus on the set let's focus on the sound let's focus on particular actors and characters um, then try to make some more specific notes until you can then condense those into key moments that really stand out and we can talk about those in much more depth later if we get those questions about key moments or key elements of the design um, so starting holistically getting that overall appreciation what excited you about the production what was your feelings and your personal response then breaking that down into more concise moments which can then be sort of written about and really analyzed and expanded upon in detail that would be my general approach <laughs> lovely thank you very much now for anybody who's just joined us um, just a reminder don't be shy, please do use the um, Q&A box at the bottom of your screen if you've got any questions for Carolyn um, or indeed for me um, about the show. Um, and um, just a reminder as well, um, if you could um, say a little bit about who you are, even if it's just your Christian name or what school you're from, someone's put a lovely message here in the chat to say, nice to meet you at last, Carolyn. <laughs> I have no, we've no idea who you are. <laughs> So perhaps if you just say a little bit about who you are, then um, we, then we know who you are, and Carolyn can <laughs> Carolyn can respond accordingly. Thank you. Um, okay. So oh, oh. It, there we go. And Cherry. Oh, Anya. Anya. Welcome, Anya. Lovely. Okay. So while everyone's thinking about their burning questions, Carolyn, um, do you want to just take us through from your point of view? Mm feel the themes of the production are that, you, that you've been leaning into yeah because and a reason why the themes are so um useful is as well as live theatre this can also be used as a great stimulus for students own work because it's got so many universal themes that mean so much to all of us and and there's a real emotional punch with the show as well and i think students can really find that very relatable and, and take those and make their own work from them so Themes we've got really running through uh, family is really important in the show because each member of that magnificent six has their own families but their own problems with family as well and things that might be not perfect at home and whilst there's this real feeling that the home is like this castle um, and this place of safety that they all then want to get back to at the end um, there's also you know places where home might not be the place where you always feel happiest or safest and so um, McKay lost his mum in the show so um, that's something that comes up in conversation and then Bushy talks about her mum not really being there for her and 
she has a really like, poignant moment where she, she says that she'd rather have a mum around and rather than have the money that they seem to have in their family. Um, Jonah has a, a really poignant moment where he tells us that his dad's going to leave the family home and the scene where we go around everyone's flat and we go around everyone's house when they're gathering everyone for the mission, Mission V, kind of is a real nice insight into everyone's different families. So family is something that is a really important theme in the production. Also the, the kind of conflict in the relationship between Mr. Tambo and Nesta and McKay gives us some of the nicest moments in the play and the, the acting in those lovely family scenes that kind of bookend the production really. Um, so family, something that comes up a lot. Um, there's also themes of travel journeys. Um, jour I mean, the, the play is a journey and that's reflected in the set. It's reflected in um, all the journeys that the characters go on. It's the, the Magnificent Six go on the biggest journey of their lives. But also, Syrah has been on a huge journey herself. And so that ties into themes about refugees and asylum seekers. So she tells us her story, which also then connects to the theme of family really, really nicely. So there's a whole subplot of Syrah's backstory, which could be explored. Um, there's a theme of the social theme of gun and knife crime and violent crime in the UK. And uh, something that's really nice about the production is that it is in this nameless city and it could be anywhere. And it, it's not making a particular comment about a particular city. Um, but it, it does explore these young people getting themselves in, into situations through no fault of their own, which could have an impact on their future. And there's, um, there's a book before this one. So Little Bit is, is one of the books before this one because it is a huge series by Alex Wheatle. And so there's a whole other story there about how Bits ended up um, having to take the, the gun for Manjaro. And so that you know, he's being blackmailed. That situation is something that a teenage boy should never um, have to be in and then that really sadly causes conflict with Venetia which comes back to the theme of family because Venetia's cousin Colette uh, was really sadly shot wasn't she by accident and it's really tragic sort of mm -hmm. back, part of the backstory as well so um, just the crime aspect. Um, another theme really worth exploring is, is sex and relationships and sort of there's some beautiful really tender relationships in the play and it's one of one of my favourite features about it is that lovely tenderness in the friendships between the boys and the girls. But then the whole reason, you know, this Crompton Knights mission comes about is because of the exploitation that, that Venetia um, was unfortunately subjected to by Sergio. So, and that's something that could be really sensitively but really maturely explored with students, you know, sexting and, and the images, the nudes that Venetia sent to Sergio and then he's got on his phone uh, and her phone because he's taken her phone which is why the mission comes about are things that you know our young people are are experiencing and that is happening so could have some really nice ways into those sorts of themes which we could explore um we then look at the riots so the play explores the riots going on in Crompton. um and i read in as part of my research first approaching the novel that it was drawn partly from the 2011 riots which for young people now, it's a really long time ago, isn't it? You know, it's something that's probably not in their, in their consciousness at all, so that could be explored. Um, and then connected to that really nicely um, is the theme of poverty and the situation that a lot of the young people find themselves in with not having access to their funds or the things that they might need. Um, Jonah makes a lot of comments about he really wants a new Air Maxes and he really wants a new iPhone. And Syra has this lovely line, which, which really stuck with me, which is... Um, talking about if when life tr tells you that you're nothing, some people just want to get even and that it really, really, like, it, I, I don't know about that line, it just, it just stuck with me afterwards and it informs a lot of the actions that people take in the play and I think in the wider stories so is something that really could be nicely explored as well. So yeah, a lot, a lot of themes going on there. <laughs> Thank you. That's really rich. That, and that's, it's really nice to kind of unpack it like that and remember that, that, you know, that you could really just choose any one of those themes and do a whole kind of program of work around it. Um, so that's great. I also love that you've chosen that line because that's one of my most favourite lines in the play as well, actually. And um, I remember, I distinctly remember the day that line went into the script because oh. um, MTRs and I um, had a really so it was actually a line from MTRs because um, I was saying to her, you know, don't you think what what do we think about the right, you know, this this backdrop to the riots, and do we want to kind of comment on that in any way? And that was what she came back with, which was great. And it's always stuck. I think it's great that she managed to encapsulate 
quite a big no by just coming back with that one line, which is what you can do in drama so well. Mm. Now, a question here, fantastic. This is from James French. Sorry I'm late to the par party, my internet went down. It may well have been asked already, but did you cast the show with actors with similar backgrounds and experiences from their communities? There is a real sense of truth and authenticity about their stories. Um, shall, I, shall I dive yeah. in? Yeah, um, so, um, so James, absolutely. Um, we, um, we think it's really important at Pilot that we, um, because of the kinds of stories that we choose to tell, um, because they're from um, a youth perspective and because quite often we choose things that are very, very specific. Um, and, um, and, and I guess quite a lot of our stories are speaking from a, from a place of kind of um, getting young people and audiences to think about inequality. It's really, really important to um, represent um, as accurately as possible um, those, those sorts of narratives. Um, and it's actually a huge job. It's, we would probably start the casting process certainly around now. Um, so where, yeah, in May, um, for um, a production that would go into rehearsal in January because it's a huge, huge search um, to find the actors. And Crompton was was very, very typical um, of, of that process. So finding an actor like Nagar Yeva, who plays the Turkish character in the novel, um, that um, Syrah is Turkish. And so um, we were like, oh, this is going to be challenging, um, finding a Turkish actor who's in the UK. But we just started early and took a, took a number of rounds of meeting people. We, we also do things like um, uh, a really big open hearted, open casting call. Um, and we're very, very specific about what we're looking for. And that can sometimes yield, yield brilliant results. And we not only get to meet great people that we've never heard of, but sometimes we literally find people who end up in the show. Um, so we went through that process. That process is usually a couple of months. And um, by the time you kind of do the call out and wait for people's CVs to come in or little self tapes, um, it's fun, but it's a long, long process. But it's very, very important, I think, to, um, to get that authentic experience because it just adds another dimension and it and it does make it feel truthful and then i think when you're watching something like um a play like crompton you kind of know as an audience member you know those actors are playing characters who are not them but you can also see that they're bringing um some life experience to that part that is just uh bringing an extra layer of of truth and um that that really excites us as a company and it feels really important for for pilot and important for a piece like this <laughs> so thank you for that um okay um what else was i going to ask you carolyn don't be shy everybody if you've got any further mm, questions question. or thoughts, um please do just pop them in the um q a box um but while while you're thinking about um things that you might like to ask um Carolyn, what education resources are available to help students access the production? So um, we were really lucky to get so many interviews and, and different sort of um, visuals that can go into this um, pack as well. So we've used um, the digital education pack uh, format for this. And so we think most people obviously on this chat today have seen the show and, and might be really familiar with the education pack, but should we give a quick tour of it, Esther, do you think? Yeah. So in case you haven't, if you're new to the show, if you're maybe watching it this week with your students, you might not know what's available. And maybe we can just talk through what you could do with those education resources. So I think, Lucy, I think we can have a look. Yeah, here it is. So this is our education pack. So um, in here, it takes you through sort of before the show and then after the show. So there's some really interesting information in here which um, students and teachers can access. It's got an introduction to the show itself um, and some links to some YouTube interviews with Alex Wheatle, first of all, which gives some really useful context. Um, so introduction to the show, they take us through, um, Alex takes us through the characters. Um, this interview about the world of Cronson is a really, really interesting one. So he takes us through all of his decisions about language. It's got this beautiful, like really rich, heightened language in the novels, which transferred really well to the stage as well. And so the first part of the um, pack takes us through that. Um, I then summarised a synopsis, and this took 
this took a really long time to get this synopsis down two pages. I went through so many versions of this because so much happens. It is such an action packed story. So there's um, a quite brief synopsis here of the show, which can be so useful for students wanting to remember specific moments because I know, as I'm sure you all will know, as drama teachers, it is so hard after seeing a show once to remember really specific events in detail. So that it's fairly brief, but that synopsis does go through all the key moments, which can help your students just recall, obviously, those um, aspects of it. We've then just, we've put a few quotes here and there. I really like this quote from McKay at the beginning. Uh, we've then got our cast list, beautiful Crompton cast members. So it takes us through that. Um, obviously, it's really important for your students to know the names of the cast and creatives when they're writing about the production. Um, this is the clip um, where Alex Wheatle talks about the introduction to the characters. It's a really nice little um, introduction to the backstory and he talks us through um, the relationships between Little Bit, Jonah and McKay and he reads in this clip actually a couple of minutes from Little Bit which, yeah, as it says there, it just adds context, explains some of the geography behind Cronton. Um, so then we move on to some character profiles. So these just give a bit more context about the characters, but we're actually in the process at the moment of making some character profile videos. So there are some more detailed education resources coming out um, and there's character profiles uh, where the actors themselves who played the Magnificent Six give their own sort of more in-depth um, analysis of their characters. So if students are focusing on one of the characters for their live theatre question preparation perhaps, they can do some really in-depth work on that individual character by accessing some of this stuff here and then those character profile videos. Then um, I did quite a lot of work around themes obviously um, from my answer earlier. So what we've got here, we've summarised each theme, then there's some discussion points which can be really helpful for students and just have some of those discussions, there's some questions here, there's some ways in and these are all coupled with quotes from the play. So there's quotes um, so this quote here, for example, it explains what happens uh, to Cyrus' dad, um, the context of how she ended up having to move. Um, there's some facts and figures there, and there's some hyperlinks as well in this themes section. So teachers or students can click on the hyperlinks, read a bit more information about those themes. There's some links we can make here to PSHE curriculum, to, to sort of to English if we're looking at the context of the novel. Um, there's some here, uh, information here on the theme of the gun and knife crime aspect of it. So going through the themes, it couples the facts, the figures, references to the play with some also discussion points for your students. It's a lot on themes, because it's a lot of themes. So that takes us through all that. Um, then we're probably not in the pre-show workshop stage now really, because a lot of us, we've all seen Crompton Nights. Um, but there's some really nice practicals here. So these practical activities can be done um, before or after you've seen the show, these don't necessarily have to be pre-show exercises. The show, as we know, has this amazing prologue. So uh, the rap, the beatboxing made with Conrad Murray and, and the actors themselves. It's such a dynamic, exciting way of introducing those characters. And why not recreate that in the classroom so your students can make their own um, Quantum Nights prologue. So there's a bit of script extracts there. Um, and then there's just some practical activities where your students could reenact the prologue, develop their own prologue. Um, I'm sure we all do this, but um, it's, it's so much more interesting for your drama students, isn't it, to get up on their feet during some theoretical work. So if we were studying our set texts and so notes and crosses, for example, we would obviously be up on our feet acting out scenes as our way of learning about that text. And there's nothing different with live theatre, so there's no reason why in your study of that play as a piece of live theatre, you can't be up on your feet reenacting the scenes. Sometimes I ask my students to recreate what one particular scene looked like from memory and see if they can do that for us. Um, so lots of practical things here um, that you might want to try with students. We've then got this pre-show discussion, which I hope people uh, really use because it can really help before you see a show to maybe um, have a discussion around what you might be looking for. If you've watched the show, maybe now you could use some of these pre-show discussion questions before you do a second watch, if you're planning to watch the show again, maybe before um, the ninth. 
Then moving on to some really specific detail here about the set design. We've got Simon Kenny talking through the set as well as the model images. And then we've put in some discussion points and some um, exercises you can do with your students. And then these are massively helpful. I've watched these so many times <laughs> now already, but we interviewed, uh, these were done at the Belgrade, uh, the first venue of the tour, there's Esther. So we've got interviews with Conrad, Esther, Richard G. Jones, who's the lighting designer, and Simon Kenny, who's the set designer. And then these, possibly the most useful part of the um, education pack for students, is we, we've um, just picked out four major scenes, so four major parts of the show where there's a lot going on, really dynamic sections where we've got lots of scene changes, lots of different lighting effects. Um, some amazing physical theatre, some of the best ensemble moments if you're choosing to focus on those with your students. So here, and this is such a gift, it's such a lovely um, opportunity for students to re-watch a section. We've also got the actual PDF of the script and then we've just put together some analysis to start off the students in, um, in looking at these particular moments. So these are a great resource if students want to zoom in on these particular moments. And then production photographs. So Robert Day's really captured some of these really atmospheric moments in the show. And there's a lot of these that you could, uh, you can use them for educational purposes. So it's part of the, um, the purpose of the pack. So if I was in the classroom now, I'd normally print these off and I'd put them around the room and I'd ask students to go and rotate and look at each image. Um, maybe stick them onto big A3 pieces of paper and ask students to write around each image with their opinion or their memory of what was happening in that moment but there's no reason why you can't set that as a task for your students to do digitally so there's quite a lot there in the education pack itself you've then got the youtube channel you've got um the different sort of clips that go along with um the webcast at the moment and so at the moment lots and lots of digital resources there for pilot and for, for content night so i hope that's helpful for everyone oh that's been Brilliant. Thanks, Carolyn. It's uh, incredible the work that went into that education pack. And um, usually what happens is the education pack is coming together as we're opening the production. So I, although I will contribute to it, um, I don't really get to appreciate it until we've opened the show <laughs> a couple of weeks in. I'll be like, oh, let's have a quick look at the education pack. And um, I was so impressed with what you'd, what you'd done with it. It was just really exciting seeing all the videos and I think this, this, it's a really, really great, rich resource. We've got some great questions yeah. here, so let's have a look at them. Okay, so this is from James French again. Has the show particularly resonated with GCSE 14 to 16 year olds or younger students as well? Mm, it's a really good question. Um, so I've done something a bit different with, with taking my students to this show in that I've targeted two different year groups. So I've, I've um, taken GCSE and used this for GCSE students as part of the live theatre, as I normally would, and they've loved it. But I did also take a, a trip of year seven and eight, so uh, 11 and 12 year olds. And James, they absolutely loved it. It blew their minds. Uh, and it was, so it has, um, I'm only speaking from my own setting there, but I think it does have real appeal for younger students. And it does contain some mature themes, but it's nothing that the students wouldn't have perhaps read if they've read the book. And the book is aimed at, at perhaps younger than GCSE students. Mm. So the books are in our school library, aimed at, aimed at our year seven, eight, nine readers, really. So, yeah, there's been, there was a huge resonance when, when we organised our trips with the younger students because they were able to see something which they've just never seen before. And it's why I, I've just loved this process and working on this production so much, because it does with the rap and the beatboxing and, and like the energy and the vibrancy and the life in this production, it was really exciting for those younger students to experience that. So certainly from my perspective. And then I don't know if you got much sense of, of the reception on the tour, um, Esther, from, from different groups. I would say that that's typical. Um, and actually we had, certainly when we opened the show in Coventry, um, there was a couple of key schools who just really loved the show. And then they, it, uh, similarly, I think this brought an older group initially and then realized the kind of, um, the, well, went back to school really excited about it. And then lo and behold, other, <laughs> other groups, younger ones came. And I think you're absolutely right. That certainly from, um, you know, because obviously we all we always knock this around in the office when we even start to think about a show. You know, what age group is this really for? And we sort of felt that in the book, 
um, you know, usually if the characters are meant to be 14, 15, then in a way it's like 12 and 13 year olds who are, who are going to really, really, really adore it because they, they're kind of thinking how cool it is to be just that little bit older. So I, I would say that that is, I would say that you reflect really um, the engagement that we've had from schools around the country and that, yeah, years seven, eight and nine um, have, have taken a lot from it too. Absolutely. Um, okay, question from Mandy Smith. Um, have you had any direct contact with any teachers who are using Crompton during this lockdown period? If so, do they have any feedback as to response from students and what themes or characters they have found engaging um, and or interesting? It's a really good question. I think uh, this process of um, putting it as uh, online as the webcast and then obviously this subsequent talk and the other Pilot Connects um, episodes, they're bound to be a way of engaging more teachers and more groups digitally. I've not had any feedback yet, I don't know if you have Esther, but I'd be really interested to sort of see if we can track some of the um, users of this sort of um, forum and see if people are using it digitally as a first watch and it'd be really yeah. interesting to speak to them if anyone does want to get in touch if that's the experience that they've uh, chosen to do. I've marketed this as wide as I can in, in sort of my networks and I think there has been some feedback where teachers have said oh, I didn't know I haven't seen it I'm going to use it so I think there are people using this show now in its digital format in in this two week, week period because we all as drama teachers we're desperate now for live theatre content that we you know don't have any access to so it'd be really interesting to get that feedback going down the line but um right now I haven't received any feedback so far yeah it's quite it's I think you're right that we're in the process of kind of collecting collating that um, I think though it's worth at this point saying that we do do a range um, of um, really fantastic creative education projects around a production and I think that what's proved really popular this year and not surprisingly is the whole beatboxing element of the of the show um, so um, there have been a number of um, uh, workshops based around the cooking song for example and, and also you spoke already which is in the education pack about the um, the you know the introduction to the to the show, the prologue. Um, I think those have been great tools to work with all kinds of different groups because they're just so incredibly, it's such an incredibly accessible um, tool beatboxing and anybody can kind of have a go at it really. Doesn't re You don't have to be musical or have had any musical training to just kind of jump in there. Um, so that's been, that's been really exciting. And some of the creative education projects um, that we've been part of supporting in a way it's been extraordinary just to see the the you know the imagination and the talent of students as some of those little videos that they've made or excerpts um you know from the show that they've um felt were really terrific that they wanted to recreate in some way as, as they've come in it's been really really inspiring so we know that we've really kind of um, hit on something there that's that's great for all levels of ability really. Um, and that's exciting. Um, we've got a comment from drama teacher. Um, ordinarily, um, would all those resources be sold as part of a pilot visit? They are superb. Tremendous amount of work has gone into this. Thank you so very much. Um, I think I'm right in saying that we, we pride ourselves on always making this education pack for free. Uh, we just think it's really important um, to, you know, to enable access for the widest range of schools. And, and we recognise that some schools have, um, you know, a better setup um, these days um, than, other, than others. And some schools may have a really supportive PTA who keeps the school going and other schools are just not like that at all. And so we, we want to make sure that the widest range of children can access our work. So that's that's really kind of fundamental principle to keep the education pack free. It's been um, really a, rep a response to COVID-19, putting the um, webcast online. It just felt like the right kind of gesture of, um, of solidarity with everybody <laughs> in the country, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and of course, with our demographics, and we care deeply about teachers, we care deeply about schools, and we care deeply about young people. So since we couldn't do it in Peckham we kind of had a team meeting with the key creatives as well involved and it just felt like the right thing to do so so I'm not saying that in every single situation we would be able to do that but in this unique moment it just felt like the right thing to do for all the obvious reasons <laughs> 
Um, okay, I think we've got some, sorry, Carolyn, were you gonna come in there? I was just gonna say there's a similar pack available for noughts and crosses as well. Um, so it's something that you, you have done in the past. It, this isn't um, brand new for this, it, but it's, it is such a generous offer and the noughts and crosses pack is so, so helpful for anyone using that um, as their set text even. Uh, because I know it's it's a different um, adaptation from the novel, from Mallory Blackman's text, but still the scene extracts, the information you can glean about the context from that um, online notes and crosses pack is hugely useful as well. So yeah, really, really generous offer and something that we desperately need. And that's why this, it's really nice to have some really nice feedback uh, for it on this chat now, but it's we need it, don't we, drama teachers, when we go and see a production. So yeah, it's really nice to have it out there. <laughs> That's great. That's lovely feedback. Um, I'm just going to read some of these really nice um, comments, Carolyn, because you might not have had time to look in the chat box. So this again is from James, who loved our production of Road at the Lyric Hammersmith about 15 years ago. That's so lovely that you saw it. Uh, you did some great collaborative devising workshops with local schools based on themes and issues and students got to perform them on the lyric stage before we saw the show, it was great. Yes, that's something that we still sort of stay true to that model in fact. And um, yesterday we had the um, Crompton Knights um, Schools Festival it, um, that would have happened in Peckham, um, but we took the whole thing online. Um, it's a kind of collaboration really, it was led very much by Theatre Peckham and Young and Talented who are our fantastic associate companies that were really kind of driven by them um, but ordinarily that would have happened on the stage on the set for the production um, and that would be a kind of typical project that we would hope to do with schools and it just you know as Carolyn sort of said that's lovely what you said about the noughts and crosses film um, project that we did last year I just think it's really important that um, young people have that kind of same access to a to you know an auditorium and you know the big stage and that they get to sort of see their work up there in some format um, so sometimes that might just be literally coming to watch their films projected on you know onto um a screen but you still have that feeling that you're you know the young people are on stage or it might be that we literally perform on the set we, we kind of mix it up depending on the venue um and depending on what just feels fe feasible in each location that we might visit um Thank you. The uh, festival yesterday it was amazing. The the range of responses was so creative. Was it a complete change of plan, Esther, to make them into films? Would they have been live pieces of theatre, or would they have been made as films and shown on a screen at Peckham? I think um, I, you know. I think it was it was genuinely intended as a live event this year. Um, but um, Catherine Palmer, who's a very important. Um, pilot person in a sense because she at one point was our creative education um officer she, she um uh instigated that um switch to digital um which was great and she was able to do it because she'd worked so closely with us before so she was kind of very familiar with our processes um and um was able to kind of lead that with that kind of new vision um but yeah it's incredible that they made they were able to all make that shift um, but it was either that or, or just postpone the project. But as I'm sure you're all aware, actually generating any creativity from young people at this time is a really positive and important thing um, when they're stuck at home in the way that they are. Um, so um, I think it was absolutely the right call. And I think it's extraordinary what they managed to produce. Absolutely extraordinary. So that's yeah. great. To bring in. And you, fantastic. And, yeah. So that is on YouTube. Um, if you look at our Twitter feed, um, that, that there's a link to the YouTube um, uh, festival and you'll be able to sort of see some of the kind of highlights um, there for anyone who's interested. Um, it's just another strand of our work, really. Um, James, thanks so much for your comment about um, how the show comes across on YouTube. That was something that we, you know, we did kind of agonise a bit about whether it was the right thing to put it online. But in the end, it was a no brainer, really, because it just we just knew how many people were already invested in in seeing it in Peckham or, or in fact, we'd already had teachers who hadn't been able to get to see it in Derby, for example, or at the LBT. So it wasn't even just about Peckham. It was about all the schools who had to be disappointed and, and not able to see it when they'd already planned, um, you know, a great workflow around it. So. Um, it's great that we've been able to put it online and it's great. It's great that it's been so well received because we didn't really know how, how that would be received. So it's affirming um, that it was the right decision. Great. 
Um, oh, that's great. Thank you so much, everybody, for your positive comments. Um, you should have a think about any other questions you've got and any and actually any ways in which you think we could improve our resources or anything that you think's missing. It's always really great to get your feedback as well. If you've got like a, a kind of sense of, oh, you know, if, if only Pilot did it in this way or if only they covered this aspect of the production, it's, it's a good time to sort of share those comments with us too. But it's always great to get positive feedback. Thanks. Um, Carolyn, um, I'm going to go back to one of the questions um, I wrote down for you before the session. Um, okay. I was a little ponder on that. Which design elements would be good to write about if using Cronton Knights for the live theatre section of the exam? Any thoughts on that? It's a really good question. Um, we definitely um, would look at the set design. So, the, I mean, you've got for your choice of live theatre questions, if you're with AQA, you don't know what the question's going to be and you're going to get a choice. And so it's always good to be prepared for lots of different options. Um, if you're with OCR, your questions are set and you have one question. But regardless, it's really good to try and approach your production with lots of different angles. And so for Cronton, um, I think the strongest design elements are set design and lighting design. Um, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with the costume, but as we know from looking at the costume, it's a very specific design choice that they are uniform in appearance. And so when choosing your element to write about, you want to write about the element where you've got maximum opportunity to talk about changes, transitions, um, different as different uh, effects being created by that element and so the set is really magical in, in what it creates the locations that are created um, we can there's a question that's just come up which is about the set design actually so we can talk a little bit about this um, so the set as you know if you've seen the production is this revolving um, castle sort of shape in the center of the stage um, and so I would definitely be encouraging students to reflect on all the different locations created by that set. So how the actors move it themselves, which shows it's, it's sort of coming from their perspective, it's their story, the colour that's gone into the set. So if we're talking about set design, we would always be wanting to look at colour, shape, size, texture, materials, symbolism, whether it's naturalistic or abstract. So we've got a, a more abstract set here, but it pulls out this, this idea of the the home being the castle and so there's the there's castle like elements and when I looked at Simon's mood board that he'd made for the set design and last week's chat you could see his pictures of castles but also tied in with his pictures of tower blocks of graffiti so the set's created to look like this urban cityscape that we're going to recognize and that's relatable for us but with the color palette that's come directly from the imaginations of these 14 15 year olds teenagers so um, the set, you know, on, in terms of the visual impact it has on an audience, there's absolutely loads you, you could say about that, but also just the creativity in, in how it's moved, um, the different sort of shadows and the shapes that are created when it just rotates 45 degrees, it looks like something completely different. It's something that I think students could um, get a lot out of in terms of discussion. And then just as an activity, I would, and I'm planning to do this quite soon, I would ask my students to write down a list of all those different locations that are created by the set. Um, and just the use of the bench, the bin, the street light, the two sort of, um, there's like turrets really, if we're talking about the castle metaphor, the sort of structures at the side of the stage, just all the different locations that are created by that set, I think is something really fantastic that students could write about. One of my favorite scenes is when Edwin's taxi is created. So just the entrance of the wheelie chair and then the addition of the bench and the bin and we're, we're in a taxi. So things like that because they're so quick to transition into but they're so creative and they create such a clear sense of location at the same time. They're great for students to, to use in their writing. So set design for me wins uh, as, a, as a design element to write about for Prong tonight. Um, but also you can look at some of uh, Richard G. Jones's lighting design in terms of what he says about the different changes in mood and atmosphere and how the lighting creates those tone and atmosphere changes like that in Cronton and, and it's it's something that's it took my breath away at moments on the stage and it there's moments that are laugh out loud funny followed by moments that really send a chill up your spine and so look at the lighting in creating all of those moments as well lovely um and shall I talk a little bit about how the um how we arrived at the set yeah. is that useful as well um so um we um we 
I've worked, this is the second collaboration with Simon and um, in a couple of weeks um, on our YouTube channel, if you weren't able to attend last week's um, specialist session on the design, Simon and I had a bit of a QA, and a you'll be able to um, tune in and have a, have a look at that. We'll, we'll make sure we put it in our social media feed when we've got it live um, for you. Um, but yeah, it was the second collaboration with Simon and um, it was, it's fantastic working with Simon because he's very, very open and obviously, you know, really clever and comes up with brilliant ideas. And so I think one of the first things we, the, the first things we kind of, we started talking about, well, what, first of all, the world of the play, you, you always start with that really. And we, um, we had a really interesting conversation from the off about how, although it was kind of um, a journey around a very urban landscape um, and um, you know there were lots of council estates and it felt very yeah very very urban what we didn't want to do was um, the kind of cliche of everything being very drab and grey and um, miserable and dark <laughs> and, and slightly sort of sad and, and sinister looking because um, we didn't feel that that really truly reflected necessarily what those places are like. Um, so um, colour was, we decided that colour would be important and um, we got really excited about that and Simon came back immediately, well felt the same as me and came back with incredible kind of pictures of graffiti and it was kind of like oh yeah of course it's actually these places are actually alive with really rich texture and colour. And wouldn't it be exciting to kind of um, make the world of the play feel like that? Something that Simon brought um, from the beginning, which was really exciting, was the idea that it should feel like the young people's space, that it should feel like a space that they own, so that when the, when the performers kind of appear at the start of the play, um, you kind of feel like you're in their space. Um, so that was something that he wanted to achieve. Um, we had a very, very hilarious discussion about how to do all the journeys because one of the big challenges about staging Crongton is that there's absolutely loads of walking. Mm -hmm. And me and Corey, um, our, first, our first thought was, because we're very literal and theatre directors, we don't necessarily think immediately um, in the visual. We were like, look, we, why don't we just put the budget into a travelator? <laughs> <laughs> and Simon was like are you kidding like how long is that going to sustain for and how is it expensive is it going to be because like some of these things you know and you end up being quite practical and so he brought in the with Richard actually um jointly the very powerful suggestion that instead of the actors moving let's move the set and that's really the because then you can go anywhere and it was like oh of course that's genius so that was where the idea of something that moved came from. It's really interesting, kind of the process that you go through. Um, so that was kind of the evolution of it. And then Simon came back um, to what's called a white card meeting, which is just where something's mocked up in cardboard in 3D, but it's, you know, there isn't any um, colour on it yet, just to kind of get a sense of that, what that space might be like in three dimensional dimensions. He came back with, with basically the castle or a version of it. And, ex and showed how, um, you know, if we had a thing that moved, then we could immediately, by getting the actors to move it, shift from, um, you know, one location to another. And as is typical of our shows, because we tend to do um, adaptations at the moment, there's, you know, so many locations, there's maybe sort of 30 to 40 locations in the piece, actually, and the, um, the actors are constantly on the move. So a kind of um, theatrical tool to sort of um, transport you very quickly without you even thinking about it just accepting that the journey is ongoing was really important and then elements like the bin um, and um, the chair we decided to have and the bench we decided that or Simon decided that you know to have three other things in the space would be handy um, but what's great about him is he just you know he just kind of gives you those things to play with so we didn't have a clue how we were going to do the taxi until we got into rehearsals. we had a sort of you know a fleeting notion we might use the things that simon did get you know we would obviously use them in some way but um all of those things get discovered on the floor because how we work is as, as an ensemble so we um we work it out in the room and it's it's very much a playground and everybody just plays until somebody comes up with a solution and that's what's lovely about um that kind of collaboration in theatre and it's what you want really for an exciting production 
Yeah. Um, so here we go. Got a question here. Will the production be available after the 9th as a webcast? Well, I think in that's a really, it's a really good question. I think that um, I think we we have to take it down after the 9th from YouTube because we gained the permission um, of Alex and MTS and the other creatives to do this very special online project because of the circumstances that we're in. So um, I guess we haven't really taken a, um, a firm decision about what we would do next. That's something we would want to kind of review as a company. Um, I would kind of encourage you to um, get your students to watch it this week if at all possible, because we don't know yet what we will be able to do um, following on from this. Um, but now that we've got it as a resource, um, we will definitely be chatting at Pilot about you know, how best to package it up maybe for schools um, following this period um, and um, you know if, if you fit if you feel that you've missed it and you absolutely desperately need some students to see it because they didn't get to see it by the 9th then basically just drop us an email and let us know that and you know there might be a way that we can send you a, a link um, to just help you finish off a piece of work that needs completing so we can I think we can say that we can do that because um, in an educational context, um, it's it's kind of easier to justify um, opening up those resources um, for teachers, but we wouldn't be able to keep it on YouTube after the nine at the moment. Um, will the amazing soundtrack be available as a playlist? Um, <laughs> sorry if I'm dominating the questions. You haven't dominated the questions at all. It's really nice to just receive the questions. So uh, no apologies necessary. Um, well, what we're, what we're trying to do is cook up with the actors. We've been sort of making little YouTube videos of the songs. So I don't think we're sadly going to get to be able to do the entire playlist. It's just so challenging because, of course, everybody's at home with varying kind of technical facilities. And what we could really do with at some point, um, as Conrad has been telling me um, a whole bunch of times, and he's right, is to sort of try and resource getting into a studio to make a little... Um, official recording of the songs but obviously at the moment that's not possible so we've kind of tried to be quite clever using what everybody has at home and um, Dale one of the actors has got a um, garage band so he's actually been helping to mix mix the songs it's been a very organic kind of process um, in lockdown so we will have three of them out there um, in you know forever I think you'll be able to go and um, have a look at them but and, and as you know, as things are relaxed and we're able to sort of review how we might be able to gather together and do it properly, um, we'll kind of look at that a bit later on, I think. But thank you. Yeah, you're not the first person to ask that question and you will not be the last. <laughs> Great. Um, has anybody got any final questions? Carolyn, is there anything else you, you want to, to share that you haven't been able to share today? Um, I... I mean, I, I thought, um, obviously, we, we'd get the kind of questions we have, like a lot about the creative decisions that, uh, and the context behind the production. And I think you've answered those brilliantly. I think if just, if any teachers have any other questions about how they might go about teaching the production, then drop, drop us a line if we've not covered your answers here. Um, and I would also just really encourage you to use the resources that are available, but let us know if there's a resource that you would have liked that isn't provided and obviously we can see what we can do and spread the word with your teacher friends and um, just get as many students as we can to watch this great show uh, would be brilliant. It's, it's really fundamentally a great piece of work for young people. We've talked about how you could write about the set design talked about how you could write about how the lighting creates such mood and atmosphere and changes in tone and, and how the lighting itself creates the journeys and creates the location. It's also a great show to talk about for physical theatre because um, Simi, uh, one of the best physical theatre actors I've seen, like his multi-rolling is, is absolutely phenomenal, so but how he changes character so quickly. Um, there are script extracts in the um, education pack as well. James is just asking about the script. So there's, there's quite big chunks in the education pack with the script extracts that are kind of between five and 10 minutes long. And then there's um, the PDF of that. You can click on the link. Um, if you want students to focus on one specific actor, you know, you could follow um, Elisa's journey through. So Mackay, uh, you could follow Venetia, you could follow Jonah, goes on a really big journey, doesn't he? His character development of being quite frightened at the start and then 
all the falling out and then maturity towards the end. So I'm just trying to sell all the great angles that you could explore this show from, but let us know if there's anything that's not really provided that might be useful to you. Lovely. And um, just to wrap up, just to answer this question about the script. Um, so before we came online, Lucy said that what would be really great would be if you, if you are seeking um, a fuller version of the text, um, again, it sort of works along the same principles that we can share that as an educational resource, that's fine. Um, but what we'd appreciate would be, would you mind emailing back to the link that you, you will have received to get this Zoom link to this seminar, um, just um, so that Lucy can do it, um, direct you from um, her desk as she sort of thinks about the best way to share it. That would be fantastic. So um, yeah, just drop her an email and say, I'm really, really keen to get a copy of the script and, and we'll work something out that, that can work for you all. Um, that would be great. Um, I just want to say um, thank you so much, Carolyn, for this really valuable hour. It's been great to kind of unpack it and, and to unpack it from this perspective. It's just really lovely to get this um, insight and, uh, and, you know, to really sort of think about how, um, how to teach this and, um, and also, um, yeah, what's working well for, from, the, from the kind of education pack. So that's lovely, isn't it, that we've had such great mm -hmm. response. Um, yeah, thank you. And I also just want one final thing um, to encourage all of you to um, attend, um, if you're free, um, the next Pilot Connect session, which is on Thursday at two o'clock um, with Alex Wheatle himself. How exciting. Um, so I'm going to be doing um, a Q&A with him and we're kind of going to do it partly as a bit of a retrospective. So we're going to hear a bit more about his life and the inspiration for Crompton um, and um, some thoughts about um, writing, really, how you get into creative writing. So I think it's going to be really, really stimulating um, and I'm really excited about it. And the Pilot Connect season will continue throughout this bizarre COVID-19 uh, period. And weekly, we um, are doing all kinds of great workshops and talks. So um, yeah, um, please do come and join us again um, and have a look at our website because there might be lots of other resources and interesting events that are all free um, that might be of interest to you or someone you know. And um, thank you so much again for watching the show. Um, it's been um, a pleasure to make it. It's been a pleasure to share it with you. And we're so, so grateful for your attendance today. And um, yeah, and, and we hope um, it goes really well with uh, those working on exams and, and all of that. We wish you the very best and don't hesitate to keep in touch with us if there's anything we can do to help.